It began as an expedition in search of an entity that might only exist in the mind of our leader. De Brannon called it the Vulcran, and after 12 years of research, he had plotted its flight path. He hoped to establish communication, and this meant chasing cryptic radio signals across the galaxy. By the time he called me, he'd already assembled a team. And if their credentials were questionable, so was the mission. Audrey Zale was our linguist. She claimed to have a degree in non-human intelligence. If the Vulcan turned out to be male, she'd find a way to communicate with it. Keeler was the biologist. He had a great career going till he came unglued on the Centauri expedition. Daryl Fontaine was our visual documentarian. There might have been better technicians out there, but his skill as a chef was his ticket on this expedition. Lily Kent was our cryptologist, a competent scientist. She was more comfortable with machines than people. Her job was to decipher the Vulcan's signal. But if technology failed, De Brannon hoped to achieve communication through telepathy. He'd hired a Class 10 telepath named John Winderman and his empath, Eliza Scott. They'd meet us at the ship. Which leaves me, the project coordinator. What am I doing here? Let's just say I love a mystery. Rumor had it that this expedition was nothing more than a bone thrown to an old professor for years of loyal service. Most of his colleagues dismissed the Vulcan as nothing more than random radio noise. But de Brannon's research suggested it had been in existence since the birth of the galaxy. He traced it through mythology and theorized the Vulcan was a primordial force creating new stars in its wake as it moved through the universe. With our limited budget, de Brannon had chartered us an ancient freighter called the Night Flyer. The port officials had little information about it, except that it met our flight requirements. That was good enough for me. The others had different expectations. I've taken B, Captain, and Winderman and Scott will be an A. Scott? Who's Scott? I have no idea. 
idea. Something was odd about the ship, and we all sensed it. De Brannon had been evasive about our captain. And as of yet, there was no sign of him or his crew. Welcome, Dr. De Brannan. I apologize for not greeting you in a more personable manner, but pre-flight duties prevent this. I'll join you in the lounge after takeoff. No apologies necessary, Captain. None at all. We're thrilled to be here. Nice voice. That's important in a captain. An artificial skyscape. All the comforts of home. But there was an emptiness to it. Like an ancient temple or a tomb. Something I wouldn't understand until much later. I could be happy here. It's extraordinary, isn't it? It's different. Excuse me. Captain, have Scott and Winderman arrived yet? They've cleared embarkation. This is my colleague, Dr. Eliza Scott, Professor Michael de Brannan. Nice to meet you. Come along, we'll do the introductions. Everyone's so looking forward to meeting you. Great. The man who brought us the crash of the Pleiades. You can read my mind anytime you like. Wonder who does his clothes. What an asshole. Do you know Miranda Dorlak, our project coordinator? Dr. Scott. Hello, darling. Your reputation precedes you. Uh, and, uh... I'll take that as a compliment.
ships on board tracking will lock onto the Vulcan signal, but it's a tenuous link at best. Lily, it's essential that we all be kept abreast of any deviations in the plotted course. And by tomorrow, Audrey, once we escape the phasing caused by the row off Eucus Nebula, the signal will be strong enough for us to begin the decoding process. Professor de Brannin. I trust everything to this point meets with your approval. Absolutely. It's, it's just as you said it would be. I missed something. Oh, I'd like you all to meet our captain, Roy Deris. Is this some kind of a joke? Brandon, you're talking to a hologram. Dr. DeBrannon, I assumed you would have explained. That might be nice. Well, I had intended explaining. You see, it's all very simple. The ship is so advanced that Captain Eris performs all the functions himself. By sending out my hologram, I am, in a manner of speaking, able to be in two places at once. No disrespect was intended. None take, surely. Hey, wait a minute. Brandon, this is twice now. First, no research ship, and now a hologram instead of a crew. I don't operate like this. I'm not professional, man. Ed Winderman, and we're getting off to a beautiful start. Please, please, all of you. Captain Eris shares our fascination with the Valkyrie. His unique knowledge of the region ensures us the best possible chance of finding our prey and making contact. We're extremely lucky to find anyone who's willing to take us into intergalactic space. Bullshit. All right. Let's just say, for the sake of recruiting a team and getting us financed, he's been selectively honest with all of us. But we shouldn't let that affect our work. Any more surprises, Michael? Not at all. Absolutely. It was all just a misunderstanding. Oh, great. Great, great. That gives me lots of confidence. We all have things to do. What is Joe? What are you picking up? Pressure. Sense to it, right? Yeah, of course. He's a class 10. In his dreams, Brandon probably got him discount. Yeah, like you. Hey, I get my full rate. You think I'd be here otherwise? I've always admired your dedication to science. other details have you forgotten to mention? Honestly, I didn't think it was important. It never occurred to me that it was that unusual. Michael, you've never flown a mission before. You can't be irresponsible with professionals. Look, Roy requested his privacy, and I didn't see that as a problem. What else didn't you see as a problem? We're on our way. Can't you forgive an old man who spent 12 years of his life trying to get up here? Michael. But would you have come if you'd known the truth? I'm here, aren't I? The only thing that really matters is the Valkyrie. Think of it. A race of sentience sailing out from some unknown origin in the core of the galaxy. Seldom coming within a light year of a star now. If only we can communicate with them. Think of the secrets we'll unlock. I read your thesis, Michael. Now, what haven't you told me about Royd? Well, I didn't want to mention it, but, um... I think we're the first humans he's taken on board. Then what is he? I didn't ask.
working? Well, that would pose a slight technical problem. Falling, Royd. Otherwise, you might as well just stand on the sidelines and watch. specific out of this. It's like, it's far more amorphous than I expected it. Oh, don't be discouraged. The signal will gain strength as we approach. The pattern still defies logic. Was it focused? It's locked and fixed. Well, maybe it's interference from the ship. If you check the onboard electronics... I can't access the computer. Royd explained to me they weren't compatible. What? How do we even know that Royd exists? We, we haven't talked to him. We haven't really seen him. Suppose the ship is completely automated and he's just some sort of artificial intelligence or something. Now that's something I can focus on. Give me the phones. Now, if it's the ship, it's a piece of cake, right? Right. All right? Okay, so turn the signal on. Disturbing you? No, I was just getting some work done. Seems a slightly, well, odd location for work. I find this an interesting place. Yes, yes, it's a, it's a nice room. Actually, I'm glad you're here. Are you? Good. This morning I may have been a bit abrupt. Look, you said some things that really made sense to me. Look, please don't misunderstand me. But do I frighten you? No, you don't frighten me. You don't frighten me either. Why do you stay in your cabin, Roy? You don't need to be two places at once, do you? No. Who are you?
Miranda, this is difficult for me. But how do you know when you can trust someone? How do you know? What is it, Royd? One of the things you said to me was that you would never be content to sit on the sidelines and watch. Well, neither can I. successful one but she disliked people and when she grew rich enough she had this ship built to her specifications a ship that needed no crew what about you well after 30 years of flying alone mother became bored Actually, I shouldn't call her my mother. I am her cross-sex clone. I was bred to be her companion. And lover. I was placed in an embryonic tank. But she died before my birth. She had programmed the ship for such an event, however. And we drifted in space. For 11 years. While the ship's computer raised me. I lack your physical strength. My world is weightless. You see, the gravity the ship is generating is for your benefit, not mine. To me, it is agony. And if Mother taught me one thing, it is that my body has no natural immunities. And the direct contact with humans would probably kill me. I came to a decision you see, I want so much more than your trust, Miranda. When we return, I want you to take me off this ship. But you'll die. I would rather have five minutes living as a man than spend the rest of my life in this prison. Stop it. <laughs> mm. 
That is your second bottle of wine. Excuse me. I believe all that drink's a good idea for Winderman right now. Will you stop acting like my dear mother? You know you look ridiculous. That's no way to make these people respect you. Sit tight, darling. You'll see some respect. All the chat about Ride and John's very... <sighs> we should concentrate our energies on our work. Ride's not a problem. Don't worry, Michael. Everybody here wants the same thing. But what you get may be a whole other matter entirely, isn't it right, Michael? There were dangerous currents building, swirling around Winderman. You didn't have to be a class 10 to feel them. My own telepathic abilities were limited, but I believed Royd. I thought I sensed his presence as if he were trying to communicate with me. And then I knew I'd been right. what you told me yesterday about Mr. Wonderful. We'll talk about it later. What are you talking about? Nothing. Fuck it. Tell him he'll love it. What? What are you talking about? Nothing. We'll talk about it later. Go ahead. Tell him. Tell him about my malfunction yesterday morning in the cargo bay. Go ahead. Tell him. You said it, pal, not me. That's not what I meant. First day on the job? The living legend impresses the chicks by freaking out when he puts the headphones on. <laughs> I sure feel better he's on board, don't you? I don't need to hear this shit. Daryl! You have no choice. You might as well face it. John, stop it. He's not worthy of your attention. Well, none of them are worthy of my attention, are they? I mean, all this whispering and muttering. The Class 10. The burned Class 10. Well... My malfunction isn't a malfunction at all, is it? I mean, because, in fact, I've isolated a presence on the ship! John. Not here. In private, please. Oh, in private? She's got her own secrets, too, you know, your perfect coordinator. Oh, yes. The ship is alive! It's a seething, malignant presence, and it hates all of you! Don't you believe me?! It's alive! It clarified! I saw it! But it wants to hurt you. Only I have the power to control it. What's he talking about? I'm going to get him some coffee.
Why are you doing this? I do not understand. This is because I wanted to leave. It has nothing to do with the others. It is my choice. I'm glad that you called. I need to talk to you. Okay. I'll be up. Four to one, we're turning back. Fucking A, baby, no Centauri for me. We haven't done a damage assessment yet. Hey, you say it's a gas leak. I say that's a bunch of shit to Brandon. I almost lost four fingers. It's no goddamn gas leak. Yeah, well, Brandon. I'm not convinced of that. I think we should do a damage assessment first. Hey, we chartered this ship. We don't run it. Damage assessment's the captain's responsibility. Now, where the hell is he? What the hell is he? And what the hell is this ship? We can't turn back right now. Why can't we turn back? I think something's happened to Royd. Maybe Roy's the problem. Maybe he's the reason we can't turn back. The computer's the problem. It runs the entire ship. I don't believe that for a second. Who runs what here? What are you saying? Roy has nothing to do with running this ship. The computer does. Roy wants off this ship. Now who's stopping him? The computer. <sighs> okay, so John was right. That's what I'm trying to find out. <sighs> Look, it's just a computer. We'll find the specs and shut it down. It won't let you. Just let me talk to John first. You expect the rest of us to just sit here? That's what I'm saying. I think it's the smartest thing. Let's get the computer. I'm still in favor of the damage assessment. Don't give it to me. I made it happen, right? You saw it. You know what the doctor said about you taking Esbron? It'll kill you. The drug's just too powerful, so give me that gun.
I saw the thing. I can smash it. I'm the only one who can do it. No, Miranda's on her way, Joe. Maybe we can figure out a way to get out of the ship. Uh, 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 uh. It won't let us. So keep away from me. Keep away from me. It's a test, you see. My redemption. Darling, listen to me. It isn't a test. It isn't a test. It's not personal. Everybody's terrified. I'm terrified. Everybody... You think I can't do it, right? No. Oh, yes, you do! I know you! I just think you should put the gun down because I just think you've locked into something too awesome. It's too powerful. Please, <laughs> Okay, what are we sending? A low-level data stream. We talk to the ship, the ship receives our signal, and it sends us back a response. And then we're in. Then we're in. This is pure hysteria. We have a right to know about the ship. Not only are we violating Royd's privacy, but we are jeopardizing our tracking link with the Valkyrie. Now, I am the executive on this mission, and I forbid it. Look, it's no big deal. We'll find out about the computer and get back to work. Killer. Killer, you okay? So far, so good, man. Nothing weird. But I'm ready, man. I'm packed. Do not harm her. Liza? Miranda, it's a hell of a business, this, Don. It's a hell of a business. So nice to meet you, though, because we never really met like you and Eliza, have we? She thinks so highly of you, darling, so highly of you. And now here we are, about to slay the dragon, as it were. You said the ship was alive. What does that mean? It's a nasty business in the lounge, wasn't it? Stick it up your ass, you silly little fuck. You were absolutely right in believing Royd. The computer is the problem. But the party left out, you see, is that the computer is really Royd's mum. Yes, through some kind of esper technology, she transferred her consciousness and her will into the system's core. Eleven years ago, before she died. It's really quite something, isn't it? It's so twisted and eatable. She's still attached to Royd, you know. I believe that she would kill all of us just to save him. Especially you, Miranda, and I'll tell you why. Because you're the girl who can run away with Mommy's little boy. But, you know, that doesn't have to happen. I'll tell you why, because I can see her. She lives in a crypt at the bottom of the ship. We have to crack the stone that protects her heart. What about Royd? Is he safe? No, absolutely not. But she can't hurt us, you see, Miranda, because I can read her mind. Whatever she does, we stay one step ahead. Which is more than I can say about your colleagues. Now, we really must hurry. Otherwise, somebody's going to get themselves hurt. Where's Eliza? Eliza? Oh, we just had this tiff. She's sulky. We're talking it out. Okay, we're ready. 
Send it. You're very special, Miranda, and appreciating his Why talents. Why is the computer stopping us now? Adara. Adara. Got the jammer working. Confusing the thought synapses, blocking the clarity. The eyes can see, but the brain can't focus. What's the core unit doing in the drive room? I told you. It's a crypt made of stone. That's where she hides her core memory. Her soul. God, you're right. We're going to need a tool, aren't we? Five minutes farther away than last time you called, asshole. I'm in the drive room, man. Okay, I'm at the schematic. Miranda? John? that made her violently ill whenever she used her talents. They opened up her head and took her gifts away. Why are you telling me this? She wants you to know. She was always stronger than they were, Miranda. But she never lost her power, you see. It remained part of her. Suppressed and erratic, erupting in times of great emotional stress. It never broke her, Miranda. It never broke her. Okay, I got the electronics up. Everything's cool. Uh huh. Up here, too. We're gonna laugh about this one day over beers. You hate beer, Fontaine. I can learn to drink it. Oh, hey, I got something. I got some trays. Jesus, this computer's a monster. Killer. Killer? I can't figure this, man. Odd cabling coming from the CPU in addition to the electrical. Killer, where is the fucking computer? It's up top. I read this thing, it's up top on the other side of the bulkhead wall in the lounge. Shit, man! I'm down here, I'm ass backwards from it! She was a great, great lady. A class 20 if they hadn't messed with her. Why are people so cruel, Miranda? So intolerant? Why do they interfere in other people's lives and take what isn't theirs? Tell me, Miranda, why do you do that? Why do you do this to me? Just to relax it, my darling, to get you ready. If you hurt her, I will never stay. 
I will leave you. You are a computer. You are not my mother. Kill, you okay? Something would have happened, it would have happened now, right? Yeah, no question. Relax, Keeler. We've been through a lot weirder shit than this. Something's happening here. What? What's going on? 
don't know. I don't know. Some kind of readout. I don't know what the hell it is. Check it out. What the hell is this? Look for a menu. Okay, I'm trying. Looks like some kind of machine language. Yeah, security code. Uh-huh. Ask if we can override. Okay. Ask if there's override capabilities. Okay. Great. How do we affect override? Good. Um, access code for override. Okay. Go to hell! Where you belong!
That bastard. He killed her. He killed Lily, and he killed John Winterman. Take it easy, Audrey. God damn it, leave me alone. He tried to kill us, too. It wasn't Royd. We have to believe that. Computers don't do this. Let him show us things. Come on, Weasel, show us something. Let me see your ass. Shut up, Keeler. For God's sake, he's just trying to help. Dr. DeBrannan, I have shut down the computer. Now, the cargo bay has been breached in three points, and the door will not seal. The ship has begun to decompress. If the bay cannot be patched within three hours, the ship will implode. How do we know that son of a bitch is telling the truth? Do what you want, Audrey. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute! <coughs> close it, close it. <coughs> do you want to stay? Do what? Kilo knows where the core is. We don't know what's between it and us. Fuck it, man. Let me go back and kill it. I won't let it fuck with me anymore. Kilo, the ship is on fire. Well, just down here. We don't know if it's anywhere else. That's my point, exactly. We gotta get outside and take a good look at the ship. What if he leaves us out there? Huh? What if he leaves us out there? What if this is all bullshit and I'm stuck out there in a pond, he fires the engines up and leaves? Maybe we shouldn't have messed with the computer like Miranda said. I believe her. I got nothing else to believe right now. Okay. We stay in touch. responsible for this disaster. Don't blame yourself. You just did what you thought was right. I was such an idiot. We'll probably all die. You hear what that asshole said? Killer is just words. The ship's not going nowhere. Roy wasn't lying. Come on. Let's get this fixed and go home. Yeah, well, where is he, man? I hate this. We got control over nothing, Daryl. We got control over nothing. Keeler, shut up. Audrey, Daryl, see if you can find some scrap to patch the door. Don't go too far from the ship, man. Stay close. Keeler, look for a tear on the top of the bay. Roy says we have less than three hours. Where is he, man? Why isn't he out here? Is it Lloyd? How do you expect us to tell from out here? Where the hell's it going? Is he trying to get away from the ship? You're closer than we are, Keeler. What do you see? Miranda. 
I never imagined she would hurt you or anyone else. All my life, she has lied to me. I know. People have died. I don't blame the others for being suspicious of me. For hating me. They're frightened, Royd. They don't understand. Can we fix this ship? I don't know. If we can stabilize this damage, I think I can override all the automatic functions. It'll take everybody's help. But I think it can be done. I smashed the stone, Miranda. She should have died. Now you're just gonna have to believe me. I'm the only one who can stop her. I know what I have to do. Killer? I don't care what it is, I'm gonna kill her. Damn it, killer, don't go in there by yourself. I knew it. Killer. 
It's turned off real cute. Inside. I know. I know. She sealed the outer airlocks. I couldn't get to them. Killer, would you wait a minute? You don't have to be a goddamn hero. I'm here, man. I'm cool. I'm flying. Whatever it is, it's got a big surprise coming. I hear you. But wait for help. Centauri is over, man. You don't have to prove nothing. It. Behind the bulkhead wall, the core unit. Hey, Fontaine, Fontaine, it's cutting like butter. I'm through in five minutes. It's all over, baby. It's all over. Take it easy, killer. You don't know what's on the other side of that wall. Yeah, well, Centauri this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
you to talk to me. Over here, man. Over here. Where? Where? We don't see you. Do you see him? I don't see a damn thing. Kilo, where are you? Kilo? You're looking for Christ's sake. Answer me. must come to an end.
Maybe the Vulcran had only been a myth after all. An immortal being migrating silently through the universe, creating new stars in its wake. To know the why of them. Think of the secrets we could unlock. Think of the 